Hey everyone, this is Phil. Welcome to our full review of the GAN 356i. Uh, here I have Damien, who uses CFOP, and Jules, he uses RU. Hello. Uh, so together, uh, we're pretty diverse as cubers, and so together we're going to review this product, show you what it's about, and also give you some of our opinions. To start off, this product is a smart cube, so it's comprised of two halves, hardware and software. The main part of the hardware is the cube itself. It measures 56 millimeters across, is magnetic, and the stickerless one weighs 78 grams. There's also a black version if you like that better. The cube comes with a charging stand so you can charge the cube and use it with the app. The app Cube Station is the other half of the product. It's free and is compatible with most modern smartphones. The app gives you scrambles, times your solves, stores your data, and lets you battle with people near and far, your personal friends, and even strangers on the other side of the world. The app even tells you your move count, turns per second, rotations, and how smooth your turning is. If you want help using the app, feel free to check out our how-to video linked in the description. The product as a whole retails for $88.99, and so it's no secret that it's on the expensive side. Let's take a closer look at each of this product's parts and learn more. Alright, so I actually, as a cube, I kind of like this. Um, it's obviously for me not super flagship level, but it comes really close. It has a lot of good features and for 78 grams, they packed a lot of design and uh, electronics into this cube, which is uh, really impressive. The magnets feel good. And uh, overall, it's, it's a very decent puzzle and I get really good times on it. How about you guys? Uh, yeah, I, I get about a second or two slower than my average times. And I think that's because, like you said, it's not flagship level. It is a bit locky, but I've also noticed that my turning style can adjust to it. Yeah, performance is pretty good. Cool. Um, I found myself averaging around the same, actually, with this cube. Really? Maybe because it kind of falls in line with what I like, which is like really lightweight, very tactile, um, which is super impressive because of the fact that, there, again, all the electronics are packed in here. Uh, all of the design features are packed in here. 78 grams. 78 grams. And yep. and it, it really is a cube that I enjoy turning, but... It's it's not like a a flagship as you guys are saying. Mm -hmm. It's I wouldn't switch to this even if it was uh, non electronic. So yeah, it was like smart cube. yeah, but it's it's good for what it is. Yep. And uh, one thing, or at least two things, we want to warn you about is uh, one. Uh, Jules observed that the uh, the wings around the edges are actually kind of fragile. So if you do try to take the cube apart. Just do it very slowly and deliberately. Uh, if you tear too hard, it might break. And also, if you're trying to take off the um, the GES nut or, or whatnot, just be careful. Uh, it sometimes launches the nut out of the uh, of the cube. If it's you, the spring, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, well, the spring. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. So, yeah, those two issues. Uh, but overall, I think we can agree that the cube is really good for what it is. Uh, it's the best performing smart cube right now on the market. And uh, we can say that without a doubt. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. So the first feature we're gonna look at is free scramble. And it's an area of the app where it just lets you hand scramble and then mark that you're done hand scrambling and then you can solve it. And it starts timing you as soon as you solve it. And uh, for this one, for the cubers, it's not a really reliable way to time your solves because you want uh, you know, random state scramble. Um, but this is, I found, really good for showing friends how the smart cube works. Uh, the smart cube, naturally, it wows a lot of like, non-cubers. They're like, how come this thing has Bluetooth? What the heck? You know, so it's a good way to, for them to hand scramble and them to see what's going on in the app so that, you know, they're not rushed by the timer that takes down for your scramble and your uh, inspection. So I found it really good for showing friends uh, who are not cubers how this thing works. I think it's better if they called it display mode, right? Display mode? Yeah. Because if it's display mode, because it's it's trying to show off to, to other people how the cube can work, you know, mm -hmm. how the app can function. That it's, it's really more about showing off the capabilities of the cube in a non-stressful environment to your friends. But I don't have any friends, so I don't really show off this <laughs> mode that often. <laughs> We're, we're your friends, Jules. You can show us. Oh, okay. But you guys have seen it too. So yeah, just... <laughs> honestly, I think this mode is one that I've devoted the least amount of time to. I think generally because whenever I pick up the 356i, I have an intention of practicing or racing against somebody. So that involves legitimate scrambles. So yeah, I haven't spent much time on free scramble, but it, it is interesting. And I can see their point with showing it to friends. It's pretty cool. Sounds like an excuse for not having friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> 
All right, so next we're going to talk about algorithm scramble and standard timing. So these two areas are where the cubers go if they want to do times on the cube and uh, see their stats and stuff. Um, so both of these modes give you a limited amount of time. You do the scramble, you have some inspection, and then as soon as you start turning, you start getting timed. Uh, it's worked pretty well for me. Um, I think one of the greatest strengths is it... Uh, it tells you what it is, right? It's really real with you. If you get a bad time, it tells you, yeah, your time was bad, your move count was really high, and I don't know why I'm looking your way. Your fluency away. was low. Your fluency was you low. You did too many rotations. Yeah, too many rotations. It just tells you the facts, right? Yeah. And uh, it kind of shows you what works in a solve and what doesn't. And sometimes uh, knowing these things, it, it helps me temper my, my level of risk that I take in a solve and uh, makes me a better solver. I, I, I like seeing how low my move count gets um, and, uh, yeah, very useful modes. I was just, like, gonna say how useless this, the, the, the statistics are for me, personally. Because I use Rue. Yeah. Because, like, every single time I, I do a, I do a solve and I look back, you know, on the, Cross uh, is not done. the, the stat, <laughs> basically, on the stats that I have, the reconstructions, are, they're just absolutely hilarious. And then when I'm looking at the reconstructions, you know, because, uh, if you look at the reconstructions, if you're doing a CFOP solve, it actually sees... Cross F two L O L P L L. Nope, not for me. It's just C, P, P. C -P. or <laughs> F P, and then yeah. like call it a day. It's, it's it's funny to look at the reconstructions for mm. me, um, but most of the stats are absolute garbage for yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. At least it can tell you your fluency. Yeah, no, yeah. the the fluency yeah. is quite nice. I do like the fluency score. The, so I think I've spent the most time on the three five six I on algorithm scramble. Uh, I didn't know the difference between algorithm and standard timing. Uh, for a while, and it turns out it's just a difference in inspection time, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think they're kind of redundant. Uh, could have probably been just one, but still, it, it, I like it. I like the feedback it gives me as a CFOP solver. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> guys. <laughs> yeah, I, I can see how bad I am, right? It tells me. So, yeah, I like it. So the virtual cube portion is probably my favorite part of the app. Uh, I kind of grew up with like the Heist Virtual Cubes, so seeing something like that translated onto a mobile app is, is pretty cool to see. Um, and that, and I really don't have that much use for any of the other statistics and things that sort, so this instantly becomes my favorite part. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so bad at the Virtual Cube. Um, I, I grew up in the time period of the, the simulators that you mentioned, yeah. but I never was actually good at them. So. Yeah, likewise, I'm, I'm not good at this either. It's fun to do because um, it's challenging and the muscle memory doesn't work because it's on a keyboard, on a, on a phone. But, uh, I mean, it's fun. It's, it exists, so I'm happy about it. Yeah, I, like like you, I, don't, I haven't messed around with it too much, but I did for a little bit. And I did notice that the inputs they have are fairly intuitive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they so make like, sense. So, like, R's on the right, you know, L's on the left. It, it's pretty, pretty intuitive. So, if... If you were to practice, I think you'd get pretty good at it. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's no hardware limitations at yeah. all with this. All right, so friends battle. That's a feature on the Cube Station app. With this puzzle, it lets you battle anybody on your friends list as long as they're online. Now, I have used this probably as much as Algorithm Scramble because whenever I first got the Cube, uh, 1v1 battle was not functioning on Android. So I just sit in the lobby for like 10 minutes. <laughs> but yeah, if I have friends on, you know, you can just race them all the time. And I have friends ranging from 30 seconds and then down to like row and fill, they can just destroy me. So there's a good mix of people and I think it's really fun. What do you guys think? Cool. I, I think it's a great social experience in mm -hmm. cubing because I, I mean, I'm old fashioned. I, I, you know, cube with friends if we're in the same place and never before had I had to ask a guy, hey, you want to race, you know, on a Bluetooth cube? Yeah. So it, it's definitely different. It's it's cool. It makes cubing social. Um, it, it makes connecting with cubers easier, too. You know, you just friend them on a, on a cubing software. So I, I like it a lot. It's a little buggy. Sometimes the invite system, uh, I'm trying to invite a person, and they're trying to invite me at the same time. And... Yeah, it's a little weird. I hope that can get fixed. But the, the core concept is really nice. And... Uh, yeah, I do, I do race with friends occasionally. The extent of my usage of friends battle is so limited because the only times, like the only friends I have are you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so somebody friend Jules, he doesn't have many friends, he needs your help. What's Please. your cube station name? <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, Wafo IJM, W-A-F-F-O I-J-M. All right, what's yours? Okay, I'm Secret X Bunny. <laughs> All right, 
I went a little riskier. I went with Damien B. <laughs> <laughs> so 1v1 is an interesting mode where you can queue up against anyone who... Anyone else who is queuing up, so you get matched randomly with people around your skill level. This is the area that I spend most of my time in. I just like racing strangers. Um, it's really helpful because you actually do get a little nervous um, when you're racing a stranger, and it helps you practice that. And after you know four or five solves, I get you know a little looser, and I'm not so nervous, and I do better uh, in a race against people, and that makes me feel good uh, when I'm doing better. Yeah, I think this ver this part of the app has the most potential. I think this is really where the smart cube needs to live. It's like you can battle anyone at any time mm -hmm. from anywhere. Yeah, you don't that, have to have friends. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. No friends required. <laughs> that's no friends required. Friend I thing. think you know it was a little disappointing at first uh, because I couldn't find anybody, but I think that's been fixed now, and it's starting to get a little more populated. More people are getting the cube. Uh, I think once it is like in the next three or four months, once it's totally populated, I think it'll be fantastic. Yeah. I think this is the best move. Honestly, it's like the heart of cubing, which is going against up, uh, against someone who is the same skill and same speed as you. It's not about friendship. I guess it's a little bit about friendship. <laughs> you know, it's. I guess that's also good, but like it's always fun to just solve. Yeah, yeah, of course. It, with against someone your own skill and your own speed, yep. you know, there, it adds a competitive nature to it, mm -hmm. and I, I think that it brings that portion. Is, is the best thing of cubing, and this app really takes advantage of that. Yep. So over the course of this video, we've shared a lot of positives and negatives on this cube. So uh, here we're gonna give you our final assessments and conclusions. So for me, you know, despite the, the mix of good things and bad things I say about this cube, I actually really like it because I think Gan got a critical part of it right, which is make a good cube. You know, this is actually a good cube, and I wouldn't mind using it for just cubing in general, even if it didn't have an app. Uh, it's, it's really well designed, it's really light, and it doesn't limit me, right? And that's why I got bored of the Geeker Cube and the Go Cube. Uh, you know, they have fantastic tech, their apps are pretty cool, but the cube just, it, it, it creates problems because they're, they're not near flagship performance, and I don't want to have a practice session where I end it blaming my cube for my lack of you know, sevens and eights or a sub 10 average, which I actually can't get on a Go Cube. So uh, to me, uh, Gan addressed the, the critical problem of having good hardware really well. This is fantastic hardware. You can always patch the software. You can always make the app better. Um, they, uh, they hit the nail on the head with the, uh, with the Cube, which I really appreciate. Yeah, I agree. It's a good, it's a good product. It definitely delivers on all the promises it made. Uh, the, the software kind of lagged behind, like I said, but with every update, I see more and more of the issues I have with the software going away. But yeah, I think generally the hardware, they did well on the hardware. They're continuing to improve the software, but initially it wasn't bad and it's better now. Uh, so I think, yeah, it's a, it's a good cube and it's a good system in general. It's a good practice tool. It's a good social tool and it's got it all. Uh, as it is right now, I probably... Can't recommend it to my fellow users, but you know, who knows? Down the line, a month, two months, that can be integrated in, and then suddenly it becomes really useful because now you see your move counts, you see your rotations, you see everything. So here's my question though. Is there a better smart cube option? Absolutely not. Yeah. Absolutely <laughs> yeah. Not. Absolutely not. You can still race people too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Just I, I the stats yeah. don't make much sense. Yeah, yeah. it's just it, it's a fantastic cube. It, it really is. It's just the tracking, the tracking works. Don't get me wrong. I can look at the the, the phone while I'm turning, and it shows all my steps properly. It's just when I look at the reconstructions, it's just it's not catered towards my method. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us in uh, talking about the 356i. Uh, we hope that this new format was interesting and interactive. Uh, we felt it was cool because all three of us use different methods, and we have different opinions on the cube coming from our um, you know various backgrounds. So we hope you enjoyed it. Uh, do you guys want to say goodbye? Yeah, I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, we enjoy making these, so let us know what you think down in the comments and check out the description. Bye. <laughs>